So people have heard of this concept of metabolic flexibility, which is a body that can shift between glucose and carbs really well, or glucose burning and fat burning, rather, I mean, really well. The average individual, because they have chronically elevated insulin, is essentially stuck in glucose burning. Even when they start to fast, which should shift their body to fat burning, they don't. They stay in glucose burning. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're a carnivore, it's almost like you're stuck in fat burning. And the body has a little bit of a reluctance. You've lost a little bit of that flexibility. Now, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine. If you're going to be anywhere, be in fat burning mode. But it does make it a problem if you come dump the body with full of glucose. Well, it takes a little time to shift back. It's a little resistant. It's a little inflexible. Now, thankfully, you can go back to perfect flexibility after like a day. Eat some carbs one day. The next day, you're right back to where if you want to be there, well, that's where you are. Now, again, I'm not saying that that's something healthy or, or needs to be done. You know, that's some people might hear what I'm saying and then think, ah, oh, well, that's why I need to cycle in and out of carnivore or ketosis. No, I'm not saying that. You don't lose that at any point. So if you were, if you were carnivore or keto for a number of years, you know, would you be able to snap back into it if you needed to? Within a day. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. All Really, all it takes is one challenge to the beta cells. And then they say, ah, okay, we're doing this again. No problem. I can do that. Yeah. And probably, you know, they, since they've been rested for so long, they're not going to be, uh, they might be even, even more ready to go. And uh, yeah. whereas, it, you know, sometimes you can get, you know, in a type two diabetic, you can burn out your beta islet cells and, and uh, now become insulin uh, dependent. Uh, which happens yep. uh, to quite a lot of people more and more. Um, it sounds like the the, the insulin um, relationship and response sort of sounds like a bit of like tolerance to like like drug or alcohol tolerance, where you have this this buildup in, in different uh, different sorts of enzymes to, to to you're anticipating your body's anticipating this uh, this, this toxic. Uh, exposure and you're, and you're trying to sort of mitigate that and be ready for it. It sort of sounds like the, your, your body's doing that with insulin as well. It, it understands there's, there's just going to be an abnormal amount of carbohydrates coming in, which, which can cause harm, hyperglycemia causing, you know, glycation. Mm -hmm. When insulin is working, it has a vasodilatory effect. Um, it's one of insulin's lesser known actions, but it's just further proof that insulin literally affects every part of the body. Every single cell of the body has insulin receptors, which really makes it really unique among hormones because not all hormones, in fact, few hormones do that. But one of insulin's effects is when it binds the cells of the blood vessel, it will induce the production of a molecule called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide, I'm sure your audience knows, it's a potent vasodilator. That's basically what, if someone's experiencing chest pain, they go in and they give them nitroglycerin. It's because the nitroglycerin will help stimulate this nitric oxide throughout the body, and it will throw open the blood vessels, for example, of the heart, and then the chest pain goes away. But to another degree, that's what's happening around the body. But in the case of the insulin-resistant man, when his blood vessels have become insulin-resistant, well, that's not working as well. And so insulin's trying to promote vasodilation, it can't, and the blood vessels stay constricted. Now, systemically throughout the body, as the vessels are more constricted, the narrower that volume is, of course, the higher the pressure goes. Those are inversely related. As volume's dropping in, this, in the chamber of the blood vessel, it's pressing in on the blood more, which increases pressure. 